Hey, I'm here at the Model T Ford Homecoming in Richmond, Indiana. Uh, they have a very nice swap meet, car show, and of course the Model T Museum. Uh, so we're going to walk around and uh, take a look at all those things, as well as something that you very rarely see, a complete collection of the pre-Model T Fords. So we're going to step through those one at a time too. Uh, let's, go, uh, let's go take a look at what's here. All right, so they have a small but very nice swap meet focused almost entirely on Model T Ford stuff. So there's actually quite a bit here for uh, me to find interesting. A lot of the tables look like this, just crammed full of Model T stuff. So if you if you have a T and you're looking for parts, Richmond, Indiana for the homecoming is a good place to come to kind of browse around and maybe find what you're looking for. A uh, nice set of drums there, some lamps, a nice uh, early coil box uh, with coils, and uh, oh, a nice uh, set of lamps. Uh, just a lot of great stuff, including this pretty much complete uh, Roadster pickup. Uh, this was priced at $4,000, including everything that you see on the trailer, which uh, I thought was pretty reasonable. Uh, we've got uh, everything on the frame there. You've got uh, uh, some uh, professional vendors here, uh, as well as uh, just a lot of people just trying to get rid of uh, some of their parts. I was one of those people. I brought a, a trailer load of stuff, although my stuff was, wasn't this nice, uh, just to uh, just to get rid of, and I uh, priced it cheap. Ooh, some newly rewound magneto fields there. The Model T, of course, generally runs much better on the magneto than it does on batteries, since the magneto uh, generates a higher voltage. Uh, a lot of uh, other uh, nice uh, parts here. Ooh, there is a Rajo overhead valve system. Uh, it's got uh, the rockers and uh, the push rods and everything uh, for $2,500. That is very reasonable. Rajo, of course, is a uh, one of the bolt-on period correct accessories that replaces the standard T-head with an overhead valve system to give you a significant boost in horsepower. Uh, there's a uh, large drum uh, Ruxtel uh, half. Uh, some very nice shiny brass. Uh, everybody likes shiny brass and uh, some nice uh, well-painted coil boxes there. Uh, actually, this guy's got a lot of really nice early stuff. Uh, nice uh, radiator. I'm just kind of uh, hitting the highlights here. There are a lot more vendors. Oh, here's a uh, complete uh, sort of Model T transmission with the drums painted different colors so that uh, you can tell, uh, you know, what gear you're in. Uh, these are all brand newly machined Model T uh, drums. Uh, so uh, these are available. Whole table full of uh, freshly rebuilt carburetors. Uh, uh, those are always useful. And, uh, ooh, banana bread. Uh, everybody likes that. Uh, this guy is doing um, upholstery. I might actually need his services, so I'll take a uh, price list from him. Here is an entire car for sale. Yes. A pretty decent looking 26 coupe for sale for $12.5. Speaking of complete cars, this is not just a swap meet. There are a lot of people that have brought their Model Ts here, so there is an extensive collection of Fords on display. Cars like this, 1903 Model A. Uh, Ford started uh, through the alphabet with the A in 1903 and worked his way up. Not all the letters got made. But there is a complete collection of these so-called letter cars here today. So let's let's slow down and take a look at them one at a time. This is uh, this is another Model A. I like the little commutator sticking out the side there. I was told this is the 198th Ford produced. This is a rear entrance Tanu. Uh, you can see the uh, the Tanu can be removed on the back. That's the back seats. Here is the rear entrance where you would uh, get into the back seats. This is a fairly simple mid-engine, two-cylinder, chained-drive car. It used a two-speed, slipping band transmission designed by Henry Leland. In addition to this relatively small car, Ford came out with this in 1904. This is a Model B, 
And uh, this is a much larger car than the Model A, more expensive. You can see this is a four-cylinder engine, a beautiful engine, by the way, with the uh, with the copper uh, water-cooled jackets around each one of the cylinders. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a step decidedly upscale for Ford. Uh, this was made in conjunction with, uh, with, of course, these smaller cars. This car places Ford up near the upper end of the market for 1904. Meanwhile, in 1904, Ford came out with the Model C. Uh, this is more of an entry-level car that replaced the Model A. You can see we still have a removable tanu, although in this case, this is a side entrance so that you have doors on the side. Engine is still a two-cylinder mounted amidships. The Model C in 1905 grew into the Model F, still a two-cylinder mid-engine car. Back up on the upper end of the market, the Model B's replacement came out in 1906 as the Model K. Look at that. It's a six-cylinder Ford in 1906. That big brass thing on the side of the engine is actually the oiler, and you can manually set the amount of oil going to each engine component. Unfortunately, Henry Ford's heart was not in the luxury market. After some changes in the board, Ford was able to pursue his real dream of an everyman's car. I wanted to point out the little detail that this is the first Ford with gear reduction on the steering. See that little steering box? This brings us up to the last three cars before the Model T, the models N, R, and S. And this is an N right here that came out in 1906. The R and the S followed in 1907. The chassis are very similar, virtually identical to one another, but they differ in, uh, in the bodies that are being offered. Uh, you can see this N has no running boards and, and is a nice little two-seat roadster. The engine has now moved up under the hood and is a four-cylinder. This is now the Model R that we are looking at. Uh, you can see that this differs from the previous one. It has a, a little short running board, long fenders. There's a, a mother-in-law seat back there. That's the single seat behind the other two. And finally, the Model S, very similar to the N, although now we have these long running boards, two-seat roadster pointed trunk. Very close to having a Model T here. In fact, a lot of the components that you look at look very similar to the Model T that came out just a year later in 1908. I've got to take a moment to acknowledge just the fantastic effort by the staff here that reached out to owners of these cars and brought this collection together. And these are the cars that culminated finally in the Model T Ford, uh, starting in 1908 up to 1927, the Model T just dominated the auto industry. At its peak in 1923, Ford had a 50% worldwide market share. That is just phenomenal and something that will never be repeated. So let's wander the parking lot just a little bit and look at just a few of the cars that owners have brought. I didn't get a count, so I'm not really sure how many were here, but uh, there were a good number of them. Cars like this very nice 1927 Roadster pickup and this 1926 Model T delivery van. I think this is an all original body. At least it looks it. It's just a phenomenal looking car. I like to see the original patinaed cars. This is actually based on the car rather than the heavier truck chassis. All right, let's take a look at this 1910 Ford race car. This is not actually something that someone has put together. This is an original Ford factory race car from 1910 with race history. This car won its class at the racetrack at the Michigan State Fairgrounds in 1911. So take a look at this thing. There's some good examples here that show the evolution of the Model T over time. Here's a 1914. You can see the, uh, the brass with the very flat fenders giving way to this 1923, moving into the 20s with very rounded fenders and uh, all black on the front. The brass is gone. I think they made the show technically open to any uh, Ford 1948 or older. So we've got some uh, Model A's parked over here. Uh, show the evolution of Ford beyond the Model T. 
Uh, here's a nice little roadster that's uh, been made into sort of a speedster. I just take the fenders off and immediately you have a sportier look. There's a Spartan uh, radiator shroud there. Uh, that's uh, just a nice little uh, period accessory. Uh, here's a more interesting closed car design. This is called a center door sedan. Uh, you notice that it's a two door, but the door isn't like up front. It's right in the middle. Uh, so you can uh, either uh, crawl uh, into the front seat or put the seat down to get in the back seat. But uh, it's uh, the door is in the center. This touring car has an aftermarket Ruxtel rear end. That was a two-speed rear end that included an underdrive to give you a little bit more climbing power. I was talking about fender shape earlier. If you look at that 1924 and compare it to the 1926 you can see in 1926 the fenders got even more rounded than they were earlier uh, also we, now we've got uh, fancy and uh, nickel plating on the uh, radiator and the trim rings around the headlights also the cowl got longer in 1926 because they moved the gas tank up there uh, this is actually the model t in its final form the 1926-27 improved ford uh, just before the model a came out Nice uh, Hassler shock absorbers. Those are the, uh, the little springy things down there. That's an aftermarket. Very nice 1911 touring car back here. Okay. 1911 was the last year for no actual front doors. A nicely done 1909 uh, Roadster here. And uh, next to that, we have an interesting build. Uh, this is a Speedster. Has a little something interesting out front. We've got a, another differential up there. Uh, this is not the usual uh, living good four-wheel drive conversion. Uh, this looks like uh, somebody is uh, working on something themselves. Uh, that should work out uh, pretty well. Uh, that's, I don't know, that's kind of a nice build. So let's go and take a look inside the Model T Museum. Uh, first, we have a, a, a little uh, replica of uh, the Henry Ford Quadricycle. Uh, next to that, we've got a, a 1909 touring car. Uh, over there is a, uh, a 26 coupe, but let's take a look at this touring car. This represents an open valve engine. There you can actually see the valves. Uh, this actually accumulated quite a bit of dirt, so it gave way fairly early on in production to the more common closed valve engine, a nice uh, Kingston five ball carburetor there. Uh, but the open valve engine is kind of rare to find. Walking into the museum, we have an airplane. Uh, this is a 1931 Pete and Pull Sky Scout. This is the first one, serial number one. Uh, Pete and Pull uh, went on to sell plans for making your own airplane using Model A or Model T engines. And uh, this is the, the prototype that uh, that whole company was based on. Uh, it's a really neat thing to be looking at. Here's another 09 Touring. Windshields were still optional at this point, so in this case what we have instead is a little rolled down leatherette piece with some transparent sections that you can look through uh, so that uh, you can use that in the rain or if you're going too fast, I guess. Here's a, a 1911 Torpedo Roadster. The Torpedo was an attempt to make the Model T look more sporty. You can see the long fenders. The seating position is moved back. The steering column angle is back farther. The whole thing is built to look a little bit racier. They just built these in 11 and 12. Here's a rare thing. This is a 1912 Model T town car. Uh, originally, town cars were built to be limousines, but uh, this is more for a taxi cab market. You can see the little uh, tube there for talking to the driver from back in the passenger compartment. Uh, these things are very rare to find nowadays. There really weren't that many that were built or survived. Here's an extraordinary truck. This is an original Model T Ford delivery wagon truck. Uh, this has been in continuous service since new. Uh, after it finished regular service delivering pies, it was in a parade in 1919 to commemorate returning soldiers from the Great War. This truck was at the 1932 Olympics and has participated in numerous Rolls Bowl parades. Talk about neat. Uh, there's quite a number of fire-related Model Ts here. Because Model Ts had a reputation for reliability and were also affordable, many towns had as their first motorized fire apparatus something that was Model T-based. So this is very common to see. 
a lot of these Model T fire engines still exist because they've been lovingly maintained throughout the years. Here's a neat little Model T race car. I really like the body on this thing. Uh, this has got a really sharp looking back end. If that doesn't speak of speed, I don't know what does. Hey, Ford didn't just make cars during this time period. He also made the Fordson tractor. Here's one from 1926. And this one has Traxon crawler treads on the side rather than the more standard tractor wheels. Uh, this is just a neat thing to see. Next up, we have a 1925 TT ton truck. That's the heavier duty version of the Model T with a grocery body on it. This is a good example of aftermarket bodies that were supplied by various people or built uh, by owners themselves. Uh, down here past these farm trucks, we see another Fortson tractor. Uh, this one has the more standard wheels on there, uh, so you can compare that to the, uh, the crawler one that we just saw. Uh, Fords were heavily used in agriculture, both as farm trucks and as tractors, and sometimes both. Here is a Model T car that has been converted over to a tractor. You can see the, uh, the normal... Ford car chassis here that has been converted to plow the fields. There were actual tractor conversion kits that were sold, but I think this one is just uh, regular old farmland ingenuity. Here's another ton truck. This one is from 1917, so that would make it the first year that the ton truck chassis was available. This one has been fitted with an uh, aftermarket cab and an aftermarket dump bed on it. Over in the shop area of the museum, we have a Model T transmission that's open so that you can see what's going on. Watch as I push the pedals, you can see the contracting bands in there. Uh, that one is going to put you on brake. The middle one is reverse. The one over on the left will put you into low gear. The museum does consist of two buildings across the street from one another. We're in the second building now. Here's a 1923 depot hack. The depot hack was a body style originally designed to take people from the depot, the train depot, uh, into town, uh, uh, wherever they wanted to go, but it's generally used as a bus or passenger vehicle. Uh, here is a Model T ambulance. Uh, there were actually quite a few Model T ambulances built for World War I. Uh, this is a, a little bit later than that. Uh, this one is set up as a telephone repair truck. I just thought that was neat because they had all the equipment in there. Next to it, we have a snowmobile conversion. Uh, this is an original postal vehicle that was used and is unrestored. Uh, very nice uh, conversion. Next to it, we have a little bit fancier snowmobile conversion. These were kits that were sold at the time uh, for installation on the Model T in northern climates. Uh, here's a nice uh, Model T tow truck with, uh, it's got an original Weaver auto crane on the back. So this is what a 1920s crane would have really looked like because, well, this is one. This Texaco truck has a standard Ford factory supplied cab on it. Uh, this is one of two cabs they supplied. This is the C cab, uh, just a nice uh, Texaco truck uh, set up here. Uh, over next to it, we have a popcorn wagon. Uh, this is kind of an impressive-looking truck. It's uh, really big, and uh, this has been set up as a uh, concession truck with uh, lots of nice leaded glass. It is for sale, so if you want to own this uh, neat thing, you can. You can keep it as a concession truck, or actually, that would make kind of a neat camper. Next up, we have a Model T Ford Sp Speedster. Uh, this has been heavily modified. The radiator on there, even though it says Ford, I believe that is a Whippet radiator on there. Uh, over around uh, in the driver's seat, we have what's known as a Fat Man steering wheel. The steering wheel kind of folds up and out of the way so that you can get in and out of the car easier. That's uh, kind of a neat period accessory. You know, for a Model T, there's a lot going on on that dash. Underneath the hood, we see a Rajo overhead valve system. Remember, we just saw one of those uh, for sale over in the swap meet. Anyway, here's one actually on a car. Uh, that's kind of neat to see. Uh, this, so this is going to be a little bit quicker than a normal Model T Ford. Uh, and it's got uh, actually just uh, quite a few accessories on here. Hey, I see a line of cars and want them painted black. 
let's take a second and address the whole black paint thing. There are a number of theories in terms of why Ford only allowed black paint from 1914 to 1925. One is that it dried the fastest, or perhaps the black paint was cheaper, or I've also heard that the baked enamel japanning process that he used on drying paint only worked on the black. Uh, you pick your theory and go with it. Here's a 1926 uh, or 27 uh, Model T Roadster starting in 1926. He started to introduce color back into the line. So uh, that was the Model T Ford Homecoming. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe you uh, learned something, uh, maybe not. Uh, anyway, it was a nice show. I, uh, I'm uh, selling here, so I sold a few things. Uh, so I'm going home a little bit lighter than, uh, than I came. That's always nice. Uh, anyway, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and uh, watch one of my other videos. There's a link right about there. And uh, if you uh, would like to, please subscribe to the channel. There's a link right about there. Uh, until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.